So let me just summarize this introduction for now. At the moment, when we talk of limit, it should be clear that we want to look at the values, the function values that it approaches to. So when we have this notation, we want to look at the behavior of the function values. We want to say that the function values approaches the value L as X approaches the constant A. So it really has to do with behavior. Okay? But then the question is, rigorously, how are we going to define approaches? Tama, di ba? Paano pag sinabing approach? Nasabihin natin, lumalapit ng lumalapit. But then, that is just mere translation into Filipino. Mathematically, the question is, what do we mean by approaches? Mas mahirap sagutin na, no? Meron ba? <laughs> Paano pag sinabi nga natin approaches mathematically? Kaya ba agad natin sagutin? Mahirap pa, no? At syempre, we can provide a way of expressing this idea of approaches in a mathematical way. At yung ating pupuntahan. That is actually the first of our topic for today. Mathematically, how are we going to define limit of a function? Okay. In general, when you talk of limit, you can really rely on graphs. If you can grab the function, you simply trace the graph, you can get the limit. Or, or if you are good in computation or if you have some software to do the computation, you can probably do an Excel and substitute different values of X and you can get sub-observed the behavior. But then again, that lacks precision and accuracy. When we say mathematically, we want a theoretical or a rigorous way of defining that limit of a function. And that's our problem now, the first problem for today. Okay? So ipapakita ko na agad sa inyo yung definition that we are going to build in the next uh, part of the discussion. This one. Okay? I'm pretty sure some of you are already were already expecting this a while ago. Tama ba? Tandaan nyo na to sa mga naka-encounter na nito. Hey, everyone. Tandaan nyo na to. <laughs> the classic epsilon delta definition of a limit. This is one of the first in calculus, ha, yung kauna-unahan kumbaga boom. This is the uh, really a theoretical or a rigorous definition. Tandaan nyo na to, dear participants. Maganda ba ang mga memories nyo nito? <laughs> For in, uh, grade 11. Okay, don't worry, sir. I will, we will probably do the introduction. Again, wag kayo mabigla. Ha. I simply showed you the definition that I'm referring to. Because that is our first, uh, uh, the first thing that we are going to do today. Ano nga bang ibig sabihin itong may epsilon at saka delta? Okay? But then let me tell you now, this is actually the rigorous or a mathematical or a theoretical way of capturing that idea of approaches. Yeah, it really is a difficult definition. Yeah, nakakalula po ang definition na ito. Ang napakaraming symbol, ang daming nangyayari. But then, let me tell you, this definition is a way of capturing. Pinakita ko sa inyo kanina, this one. Yeah. Itong function value f of x approaches l as x approaches the constant a. The problem is, how can we be, how can we be more precise or mathematical or formal in defining approaches? And as we will see, ito pala yon, the epsilon delta definition. This is one way of capturing that idea of approaches. Okay? Hindi ko muna is uh, babasahin lahat ito. Gagawin natin yan mamaya. Probably it's one of our exercises in a short while. Going over, properly reading everything that you see here. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that is for the introduction. Uh, some takeaways for this part. We need limits to formally de define derivatives and integrals. So that is one motivation why we need the study of limits and continuity in derivative in calculus. Even if you only if you're only going to take differential and integral calculus to formally define those concepts, you need limits. But then on its own, you can use limits to study behavior of functions. Okay? Yeah. Ito. Limits is a tool or limit of a function is a tool that you can use in studying behaviors of te or tendency of a function. But then as you have seen a while ago, 
At in some cases, you can rely on graphs and substitution, but then you cannot always rely on graphs and substitution. So now the question is, how can we be more formal or mathematical in defining that? At yun yung ating gagawin ngayon. How from this concept of approaches and behavior, we are going to arrive at this epsilon delta definition. Okay? Sige. I will just change my deck, uh, but then meron bang ilang uh, questions from our uh, audience. This is just a quick introduction of everything that you're, we're going to cover today and probably something that you'll going to encounter in the next two Saturdays. Okay? Meron bang gustong shout out? Uh, may bang impression ng ating mga participants? Uh, no question naman daw. Again, this is just an introduction of the things that you'll experience today. Mabigat yung pinag-endan natin kanina, the epsilon delta definition. So for the next 30 minutes probably, yun yung gagawin natin. Ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng epsilon delta definition na yun? Okay? Woo. Yung iba sa inyo siguro ay uh, pinakita lamang yung definition or nakita lang sa textbooks. But then after that, nagpumreceed na kayo sa computational limits. But then for some of you who took higher courses in mathematics, naging extensive yung experience with the epsilon delta. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Ano ibig sabihin talaga noon? Yung puwing gagawin natin ngayon, sir, okay? So don't worry. I showed you what we the end. Now we are going to proceed uh, yung journey how to go from the behavior approaches going to that epsilon delta. Okay, don't worry. We're going to cover that, okay? Pero para at least alam niyo lamang kung ano yung ating uh, goal by the end of this first part. The goal for this first part, ang gusto natin gawin ngayon to justify that. Why do we have that epsilon delta? And once again, that is one way of capturing the idea of approaches. Because when you say approaches, di ba napaka-informal niya? Ano bang ibig sabihin mo talaga pag approaches? So sir, lumalapit po ng lumalapit. But when you say lumalapit ng lumalapit, again, that is just mere translation. Tama, di ba? Wala siyang, ang added value niya, na-translate mo siya into Filipino, but it does not explain the concept of approaches. Tama ba? <laughs> Sir, di ba behavior? Pag behavior po, it, uh, it's uh, something that approaches to. But then, ano yung sabihin talaga natin ng approaches? Okay? So, yun yung kailangan natin gawin ngayon. Okay? So, sige. Okay, diretso tayo. Okay? Uh, wait, let me share again this next set of slides. Okay. okay. So, for now, proceed tayo. Dun sa next part, we are going to justify now why do we have this epsilon delta definition of a limit? Again, the idea is to capture the concept of quote-unquote approaches. Okay? Sasabihin kasi natin, the limit of the function as x approaches a is L. Ito po yun. The limit of the function as x approaches a is L. However, the lingering question is, what do we mean by that approaches? And this epsilon delta thing here tries to capture that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Wag kakalimutan, limit is one way or a tool that you can use in studying behavior of a function or a tendency of a function. And when you say behavior, in a casual way, okay, palaging approaches yung mangyayari. Okay, so let's start now. Paano nakuha si epsilon delta definition? Some preliminaries. Here are the assumptions for the function. Okay, We have a function f given by y equal to f of x. Of course, you're already familiar with this notation. We have two real numbers, a and l. A is that value that x approaches to. But then, let me be very clear now. When we talk of a limit of a function, let's say at x equal to A or as x approaches A, the function may or may not be defined at A. I showed you some examples a while ago. Yung sine x over x is undefined at x equal to 0, but then we can still get a limit. So when you talk of limit as x approaches A in this case, the function may or may not be defined at that. That's why you can read them here. This A may or may not be in the domain of F. Okay, So it means that a function can be undefined at A and still you can get a limit. Like kasi nga, ang pinag-aaralan naman natin ay behavior. We really don't need X equal to A. What we need are the excess going or approaching A. And in this case, again, L is the limit. Okay, So we need a function. We need a value of a where x approaches to the function may or not may may or may not be defined at a and of course the limit the limit is for the tendency of our function values 
L is the value that the function values approaches. Okay, so that's why. Okay, go looking at this. Then we're going to illustration, huh? Okay, we have a function. The graph is this green curve from the ref, from the right and from the left. We want to get the limit as x approaches a. So what do we mean by that approaches? Literally, graphically, you can do a tracing of the graph. And we want to look at the behavior of the function values as x approaches a from the right and then also from the left. Okay, you trace the graph. And the question is, it, will the graph or the function values approach this L. L here is the Y value. So ang question ngayon ay, if you are going to trace the graph as X approaches A, are we going to arrive at this function value or this value L? Okay? So that's the question. So, ito yung gusto natin sabihin. When we say that the limit of a function as X approaches A is L, we mean that the function values approaches the value L as X approaches the constant A. Kumbaga, again, let me go back. Matayaw. Nagkakaroon ng problem. Ito, let me go back. When you trace the graph, sorry, nagkakaproblem ang slide ko. Probably some uh, a problem with the mouse or the clicker. Okay. If you are going to trace the graph as X approaches A from the right and from the left, the question is, will the function value arrive or approach this value L? So yung question palagi, anong nangyayari at this part as X approaches A from the right and then from the left? And itong ay sinabi natin kanina. When we say limit of a function as X approaches A, we mean that as the uh, we mean that the function values approaches the value L as X approaches the constant A. But then the question is, what do we mean by this word approaches? Hmm, ideas? Paano nga ba pag sinabi nating approaches? Lumalapit ng lumalapit. Can we be more mathematical? That's the first question. When we say approaches, can we be more mathematical? And of course we can. Nung tinanslate nyo nga siya sa Pilipino, somehow it will already give you an idea. So hindi naman po ibig sabihin no value added nung ating sabing lumalapit ng lumalapit, di ba? In English, approaches, when you translate to Filipino, you mean lumalapit ng lumalapit. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Mark. So ano bang ibig sabihin natin lumalapit, lumalapit in a more mathematical sense? And really, when we talk of lumalapit, lumalapit, we mean of a distance. Tama, di ba? When you say lapit, you are closing the distance. In the chat, Mark Luke uh, uh, said, distance gets closer. Okay? And that is really what we mean by approaches. In a more mathematical way, medyo casual pa rin, when you say approaches, you are trying to close the distance. Okay? Okay. Okay. So what do we mean by these approaches? The function values can be arbitrarily close. I'm saying arbitrarily close because we mean a small distances lang kasi. The function values can be arbitrarily close to L by keeping the X sufficiently close to A. Kumbaga, if you want to say, let me go back to the illustration, but ayaw. Sorry, nagkakaproblem yung aking, uh, um, di pa yan. Okay. Okay. Let me just go back ito. Gusto kasi natin, lumapit daw yung mga function values natin sa L. But then how do we make sure that the function values will approach this L? That is by keeping the excess sufficiently close to A. Well, if we want really to say that the limit of the function as x approaches is, is L, dapat anong yayari, pati yung mga x's natin are sufficiently close to A. That is what we mean by this. So when we say approaches, we mean closing the distance. We want the function values to be arbitrarily close to L, but then to be sure of that, we want the x values to also be close to A. That is what we mean by sufficiently close. Like kasi pwede nyo kasing gawin yung mga x values nyo palayuin nyo. But then that is not what we need. What we need are the x values that are near A. And that is what we mean by sufficiently close. Okay? But yun na nga uli ang problem natin. When we say close, medyo casual pa rin siya, di ba? Pero nasabi na ni Mark kanina sa chat, when we say of approaching, it's closing the distance. 
So we can be more precise with this word close. So what do we mean by close? Again, that is referring to distance. And for this one, we are going to use very small distances. And that is actually the essence of epsilon and delta. So wag kayo matakot kay epsilon at saka delta. Ha? Epsilon and delta are just distances. 